Unfortunately, Indiana is higher than the nation in all four categories. And what that means is we do break it down into four different categories. Those students who have seriously consider attempting suicide, those that have made a plan to attempt suicide, those who have actually attempted suicide, and those who have attempted and needed medical attention. And again, we're higher in all four of those categories in Indiana than the nation. For those that have seriously considered, that means one in five Hoosier High School students have seriously considered attempting suicide. Other trends are that you know, they are, all of those stats are significantly higher for girls. Girls are two times more likely to consider suicide than boys. They're more likely to make a plan and they're more likely to attempt and need medical attention. This data should be a wake up call for us. Again, we're higher in all four categories. We do not want our, our teens feeling so depressed or disengaged to the effect that they're, they're, fulfilling any one of these four categories. We need to provide the supports, the networking, and the adult interventions necessary to keep our teens safe. We know this is a really complex issue and it's not one thing for each child. Some of the components include health factors, particularly untreated or under undiagnosed mental health issues. Depression is the most common, those kids that feel sad and hopeless for two weeks or more. We're about the same as the national rate, which is a 29.9%. However, there's a pretty big disparity between Hoosier girls and Hoosier boys. Hoosier girls report feeling that sad and hopelessness for an extended period of time at a rate of 39.2%. So that's again, 10% higher than the national rate. Hoosier boys report 19.8%, 10% lower. So it averages out to close to the national rate, but there's a big disparity between our boys and our girls. Some things to consider here is the family history of depression and suicide attempts in your family history. You also need to look at some of the environmental factors, bullying, teen dating relationships. How are kids measuring up? You know, a lot of adolescents spend a lot of time scanning their environment um, and they sometimes can have those false standards of what the expectations are. So again, that's where supportive mentoring adults can really make a big difference. There's also substance abuse. We know that there's great and growing concern about opioid use and the impact that that has on our kids' well-being. There's also that family stress, you know, financial stress, unemployment, all of those factors contribute and can increase the risk of our teens contemplating or attempting suicide. However, there is some good news here. We're all looking for it. When we talk about teen suicide, we want some good news. The reality is it is treatable and preventable. Education is the key for both teens and adults. We need to know how to respond and how to prevent, what to look for as the warning signs, and how do we actually jump in and help those teens who are, who are asking for our help. Fortunately, the stigma that's been associated with teen suicide has been broken down and continues to be broken down in recent years. We know that experts in the field are telling us that more teens actually want to share their stories in hopes that it can help others. It also helps them heal. As adults, we are more aware of what some of those warning signs are and we're more attuned to watching for those warning signs. What are those warning signs? What do those mean? Really, it's listening for discussions amongst teens of being a burden, feeling trapped, experiencing pain, or general hopelessness, seeing no bright lights. Some of their behavior inc includes that increased substance abuse, withdrawing, isolating himself or herself, or maybe they used to want to hang out with their friends and go out and do things. Now they just want to stay home, stay in their room. Maybe they're giving away those prized possessions, their favorite items, you know, those, those prized things that maybe they have cherished for years, now they're willing to let go of. That in particular is a big warning sign. Their mood in general may be depressed, a loss of interest. On the other hand, it also may be rage or jitteriness or anxiety. Overall, there's not one signal for teen suicide. It's the combination. It's all of these warning signs that we need to look out for so that collectively we can break down that stigma even more and make sure the support and outreach is available to all teens. We need to let all teens know that there is help available. There are many organizations that are ready to help 
24-7. In particular, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK, which again, 1-800-273-TALK, which is 8255, is available all the time. In our state, we're looking to improve the number of and access to mental health providers. Right now, there's one provider for every 710 Hoosiers. We know we need more and that our teens need more. We need to increase training to create those gatekeepers in every community. Those of us who are looking for and attuned to what some of those teen suicide warning signs may be. In the community, we need to provide a system of care. Rural areas sometimes don't have the same resources, but they do have tremendous number of caring individuals and a sense of community that can be a great asset to preventing teen suicide. On the individual level, again, keep talking. Talk to our kids, talk to other kids, talk to your kids' friends, ask them how they're doing. Pay attention, know some of those warning signs. As parents, we need to talk to our children about values, successes, their future. Those kids that can see a future for themselves, even when they go through rough patches, are less likely to contemplate suicide. Overall, we need to make sure that the resources for help are available and that we as a community and we as caring adults are there to support our teens at all times.